another 190-ish to go, I guess. Um, wow, we're going pretty quick on this. Uh, hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here. Welcome back to the Inuyasha Vlogs. So this is where I take a look at the entire Inuyasha series, and they are exclusive to Patreon, so a dollar or more will get you early access to all of our content, as well as other special features. And today we are looking at episodes 9 and 10, which I am declaring the Thunder Brothers arc. This not only introduces two pretty brutal villains in this series that only last for these ones, but they are recapped later on, but also uh, our little furry companion, you gotta have your cutie little hobbit character in this series, Shippo the Fox Demon, uh, voiced by Julian Michels, I believe. Uh, she was also the voice of Gohan in the ocean dub of Dragon Ball Z, which is kind of cool. She's also done a few other things. So, uh, where we last left off our heroes, they had obtained a new jewel shard, so I think now they have two total? I think they have two. And in this episode, um, they're just chilling, I guess, in a graveyard having lunch, which is a very odd thing. And Kagome is telling them about uh, Inuyasha and Mioga about astronauts and bringing a thermos that has noodles or ra ramen, I think. And apparently this is something that's also a running gag, is that Inuyasha is obsessed with ramen. Which is fair. Doesn't get that much food. Uh, and to the point, she's telling them about how man has traveled to the moon, and they are so perplexed for this, and it's hilarious. And at the same time, it, like, Kagome, like, Doc Brown would be having a shit fit. He'd be like, Kagome, great Scott! You're destroying the fabric of the space-time continuum by revealing elements of the future! Um... It's, it's, it's just hilarious how she's just able to spoil this shit. She brings her bike and then tells him about the future. Like, what else can you do to fuck up the space time, time continuum? See what I, what I mean when I think this is an alternate universe, essentially? So, uh, they're chilling, having lunch on their, on their quest, and they come across this weird little furry demon thing that also has, uh, magic. Like, sort of like magic tricks. Like, he's more of a magician than sort of a, a, a wizard in a way. And that being the little fox demon kid child Shippo. Now, normally in shows, uh, the kid is the worst actor. The kid is the worst character. Uh, kid is not good to have on your quest, because they're always annoying and a little buggery. But unlike most shows where you have to tolerate it, Inuyasha does not tolerate this little fucker. Um, anytime Shippo is out of line, smacks him over the head. And it's hilarious. Uh, so Shippo has been essentially trying to obtain the Sacred Jewel Shards in order to avenge his father's death, who was killed by the infamous Thunder Brothers Hiten and Maten. First of all, great names uh, for villains. I love those. Um, they are pretty evil bastards. Uh, they obviously harness the power of thunder and lightning, uh, which is pretty cool. So now it's like the LARP where it's like, Lightning Bolt! Lightning Bolt! But again, these side villains make great impressions. Uh... Hitan is a flying humanoid demon with a thunderbolt spear, so it's kind of like Aquaman, but imagine, like, the Trident is able to shoot lightning, which is cool, so it's kind of a mix of Thor and Aquaman. And then you have Monten, who is this big demon thing, and I swear to God looks like Bruce Willis. <laughs> I don't know why, maybe it's just the fact he doesn't have any hair, and speaking of which, that is his weakness, the fact that he only has a little amount of hair, and he thinks that's what attracts the ladies to people like his brother. Uh, because Heatan's got this massive fucking ponytail going back, kind of like how I am, but it's longer than that. Um, so basically, uh, Shippo keeps trying to steal the jewel shards, but then they come across Heatan and Maten, they capture Kagome and Shippo, and Inuyasha must now save her using the power of Tetsaiga, uh, even though he has not unleashed it yet. So, um, this two-part episode, it's pretty interesting, because, um, you obviously have... These two great villains, as I've established before, are pretty intimidating. They're also, this is the first time in the show, like, we've had some violent imagery prior to this. This is probably some of the most brutal violence I've seen in the show thus far. For anybody who watches this, this is a real shock what, what goes on here. Because first of all, you have it where the Thunder Brothers are smacking Kagome around, hitting her, choking her. You're like, holy shit! And then you have Inuyasha constantly getting stabbed with this lightning bolt spear. Um, one of the characters gets completely stabbed through, right through, pierced through by Tetsaga, just like this motherfucker, and that's pretty brutal. And then, at the very end, probably one of the best villain deaths I've ever seen. I've never seen a move like this, and that alone was violent as hell. Um, 
it's fantastic. It's a great two-parter. We are introduced to Shippo, obviously. In my opinion on Shippo, he's a good character. Um, yes, he can be a pain in the ass. He's a little brat once in a while. But he does attribute a lot to the team. He does have these magic tricks. He's a magician. He's able to create illusions rather than use power. So in that sense, he's able to trick the enemy. In a way, he's the actual thief uh, of the group. You know, you have Inuyasha, who's your um, fighter class. Kagome is your archer class. And then you have Shippo, who is your uh, sort of magician uh, thief uh, class in this quest. Uh, they obviously obtain these jewel shards. They obviously obtain, like, get the jewel shards they need. And basically, it's just a fun little, let's get revenge on these fuckers and let's obtain some jewel shards. What's some comedic timing? There are some great jokes in in these uh, in these two episodes. Um, one being, uh, is one that leads to another one, where uh, Kagome is captured by the Thunder Brothers and tells them to, she wants to lure Inuyasha and them to fight so she can get away. So she tells him about, you know, oh, Inuyasha is my love and I'm planning to marry him and if you don't release me, you know, he'll come and avenge me and all that shit. And obviously it's a way to trick the Thunder Brothers into bringing her to him. But then Inuyasha shows up and the Thunder Brothers are like, you know, hand over the sacred jewels or you'll never see your loved one again and the pillow just got off me. Shit. Uh, it's fine. I'll just work with it. Have it on my back. It's comfy anyway. So, um, the Thunder Brothers are like, you know, hand over the sacred jewel or you'll never see your love again. And Inuyasha's is just like, say my lover. Uh, what the fuck, Kagome? And it's really funny. Even Kagome's got this look like, some people just can't take a joke. It's a really funny bit of chemistry there. Uh, but like I said, the violence and the tone of this one, that's a pretty dark one, because you have obviously Maten's lust for women, in or but by having hair and him, eventually uh, his story is very sympathetic. That's one thing I do like about this show, too. Even though the villains are straight-up monsters, killers, murderers, they are terrible people, they still have heart and soul. They still have sympathy, which you can't help but feel bad for. They're very much like Batman villains, in a way. This, like, I think Ma Ten at the most is very much like the Penguin in Batman Returns. Uh, so, even though he is a brutal monster. But to the point, um, they have heart and soul. They do care about each other, these two brothers, despite their hatred for one another. Um, so that's great, but the violence is, like, really up the ante here. But what's also interesting, another power, we do find a, one of the abilities of Tetsaiga. So when Tetsaiga is unleashed, you know, honestly, Inuyasha pulls out the sword, uh, he can use the sheath as essentially a shield. It can essentially bla block energy waves, block, block uh, powers. And I think that's actually a pretty cool technique for Tetsaiga's sheath, is that it's able to do that. But there is a side effect. Too much power will make the sheath crack, and therefore Tetsaiga will not be in check. And I do like that kind of idea. And this eventually does become a, a weapon at some point for Inuyasha. There's even one point where, you know, he only has the sheath, and Miyoka's like, my lord, use the sheath, and he uses it, and he's like, dude, this is fucking awesome. You know what? Fuck the sword. I'm just gonna beat the shit out of him with the sheath. That turns out to go completely off, off his plate. And then he has to pull out Tetsaiga and one of the coolest killing moves I've seen. So that's all fantastic. And at the end of the episode, uh, the two-parter, uh, it's the first time we see maybe some connection with Inuyasha, Kagome, and Shippo. Because when there's a moment where you think uh, Kagome and Shippo are dead. And Inuyasha snaps. He says, like, you slaughtered my friends. And he's pissed off. But then later when we see sort of this sort of ghostly image of Kagome, and she's like, you fought the battle, hooray! And Inuyasha's like, wait, don't leave me! It's just that, and he grabs Kagome's arm, and there's this little subtle, oh, he does care about his friends. Okay, so he does have human emotions. And it leads to this, obviously, this awkward moment, and it's really funny. But don't worry, they're not dead. They're, they feel fine, they're getting better, now you know, you will be stone dead in a minute. Um, so, yeah, it's a good two-parter. I really had fun with this one, um... It's really dark. The action's great. This is an action-oriented uh, two-parter. Um, when you're introduced to a new companion, you know, uh, achievement unlocked, new companion required, little shitty kid. Um, and it's all overall fantastic, and it leaves our heroes in a good uh, endurance round, essentially. A good way to kind of build up their power, discover new things about each other, and fight pr two pretty intimidating villains, which I wish they had stayed around. They would have been fantastic, although... 
Heaton does resemble a villain that we will see later on in, like, Season 5, um, who will become one of the more popular characters of the show, especially with the ladies. So, I overall give this one definitely about the same thing as the, last, uh, as the last arc, a 9 out of 10. I can't, no shit, I didn't give an arc to, uh, I don't think the toad that would be Prince, I think I'd give that probably like a 6, but this I would give a 9, a 9.5, pretty much, on the Richter scale, uh, out of 10 for this, uh, two-part, uh, the Thunder Brothers Shippo, uh, arc. So, I overall enjoyed it, and of course, I want to hear from you guys, what are your thoughts on this episode, let me know in the comment section below, and of course, support us on Patreon, if you guys want to help support the show, these vlogs, you want to see them early, uh, go check it out, just a dollar more will get you early access to all of our content, as well as other special features, and your uh, funds will help us go towards our show, the Big Jack Films Reviews, and help make a potential Inuyasha fan film. So, tune in next time, guys, when we take a look at um, another filler episode. There's going to be two fillers uh, coming up, two episodes, single episode uh, reviews. Um, and this one, I want to say maybe inspired one of the video games later on for the PlayStation 2. But it also has some elements of John Carpenter's The Thing. So I'll leave you with that guess of what the hell it could be. And we'll see you guys later. So until then, Big Jack Films signing out. And bring the fox with you because they might have some magic. Take it easy.